we're back with our water chemistry series block analysis system the new concept by tropic marin in conjunction with the new icp water analysis Basically, the ICP is the baseline for all the dosing of these individual and grouped elements. ICP generates a lot of data, but it's also crucial to know what to do with the data, how to interpret them, how to know what is happening in your tank, if there's deficiencies, if there's too high concentrations of critical elements. And in case of deficiencies, there's a lot of element solutions on the market that you can dose. There's a plethora of bottles you can buy and everything is very complex and confusing. And that's why Tropic Marin came up with the concept of condensing all that complexity into just five individual bottles. These five bottles contain elements that are grouped by functionality. So with each bottle, you kind of cover more or less a functional group or at least a group that is consumed in the same ratio or in a similar ratio meaning that if one element is being consumed in that case for that bottle it would be the zinc we assume that the other elements that are in this bottle are consumed in the same ratio or in a similar ratio meaning that you can dose them at the same time the other aspect why the concept was born is when doing the icp analysis you get the light signals from the atoms and you can calculate how much of which element is in there but there's sometimes overlaps in the wavelengths meaning you have insecurities or variabilities you can't be sure 100 percent that the value is really assigned to this element and not that with that in mind the concept is that we take one indicator element so for this group it would be the zinc and based on the zinc concentration we assume that you can dose the other ones in the corresponding ratio. So with this bottle we have the zinc group containing zinc, copper, chromium and gallium. And zinc, copper and chromium are well known to be potentially problematic compounds, meaning they have a quite severe toxicity if they are present in too high concentrations. Coral bleaching can be caused by copper because it interferes with the zooxanthellae, it causes a lot of oxidative stress inside the cells, it's highly toxic in certain concentrations. But on the other hand it's also an essential element for a lot of processes a lot of enzymes use copper as like cofactors they're really important in metabolic processes and formation of proteins and bacteria but also in the corals it's also really relevant for the photosynthesis of the zooxanthellae because they need certain enzymes that contain copper to make sure that the electron transport is possible so without copper present or available to your corals and the bacteria the system is likely going to run into problems sooner or later so make sure there is copper available but not too much zinc has also high toxicity chromium as well but don't be fearful do the icp make sure there is not too much in the water because they're also essential without them life cannot function right zinc has really important functions not just in terms of enzymatic activity like enzymes the little machines that do the hard work inside the cells like turning compound a into compound b a lot of enzymes have a so-called cofactor meaning there is a part of the enzyme that contains these metal atoms and without these metals the enzyme can't be formed and without the enzyme metabolism doesn't function and without that metabolism the animal dies basically and it's not just the animals it's also in the bacteria the bacteria consume a lot of trace metals they really need that the concentration decides whether it's a poison or it's an essential element that is absolutely necessary for the functions of your organism the zinc also is part of the process of producing dna so the genetic material it's also involved in sugar and fat metabolism so that is also very important copper is very important for the creation of enzymes chromium is also part of certain enzymes is an essential element it's also toxic in higher concentrations so it's really important to make sure it's not too much in the water for the gallium that's an element that is present in very low concentrations in the ocean the biological functions are not fully determined but since it's present the decision was to also include it in case 
it is relevant in some way, shape or form. But because it's present in so low concentrations, it's also not available as an individual single element solution. And that brings me to the single element solutions. These are still available for the people who want to have fun dosing individual elements and really go deep into water chemistry. Then you have the whole range of individual elements, but also for the case that let's assume you have a solid to almost elevated zinc concentration, but your copper concentration has been non-detectable for a while and then it would be recommended to add some more copper. In that case you wouldn't want to add more of the zinc and you resort to the copper solution and then you can balance out that deficiency. But in an established tank like that has been running for a while where all the processes are in balance it's rather unlikely that you run into these imbalances. Generally you should be fine with the five bottles instead of the 35 or whatever the number may be, that should cover all the needs. One thing is to know what the compounds and the elements are doing. The other thing is the dosing itself. On the back of this beautiful bottle, you have the dosing recommendations and the maximum dosing that should not be exceeded unless you have like a super consumptive tank. But generally it should stay within that range which is two milliliters to four milliliters per hundred liters so with the standard recommended dosing of two milliliters per hundred liters you add one microgram per liter of zinc you add about 0.6 micrograms per liter of copper you add about 0.4 micrograms per liter of chromium and 0.001 micrograms of gallium. So now we covered the zinc group. I hope that was informative and fun. Maybe it was a bit dry, but anyways, if you have any questions about the system, about the ICP, about whatever, just don't be shy and post in the comments. Well, take care, have fun with the ICP data, with the dosing, with your corals, and see you next time. Bye-bye.